In this video, we're going to talk about Buick and I'm going to show you the generations from the 60s up until today. And I think the last couple of decades, Buick has sort of gone downhill. In some ways, I, I'm still surprised that Buick is actually in production today. But before we go into all of these beautiful cars that Buick has uh, done over the decades, I want to show you a couple of concepts that shows just how crazy Buick actually can be in its design. So here we have the Buick Wildcat. Before I say what year this is from, I want you to guess what year do you think this car is from? To me, when I first saw this, the Wildcat concept, I would say maybe mid 90s, something like that, because there is a lot of melted cheese, as you can see right here, both in the front and in the rear. But this car, this concept actually came out in 1985. That is in the same period when the Grand National was on sale. You can see just how different of a design approach this is. The Grand National is the definition of 80s boxy design and this is the complete opposite. Honestly, when I look at this, I feel like this could have been made today. Add a couple of sharp lines in there and update the graphics and it would be pretty much a modern concept car. It was powered by a V6 230 horsepower. However, Buick has also done a couple of concepts that I'm really glad never saw the production phase. One of them is this one. This is the 1998 Buick Signia. You, you know that there, there are sometimes polls and surveys, which car is the ugliest car ever made? Usually what happens is that either the Pontiac Aztec or the Fiat Multipla or cars like that is topping the list. But looking at this Signia design here, I really think that this would probably be a top contender. I mean, just look at this. What is going on down here in this front section and looking at the rear this rear end makes the Aztec look like a beauty queen I'm not sure what is going on with this cut line and then you have the sharp line here combined with super fluid surfaces this trim piece sticking out in the bumper it's a really interesting design and I'm, I'm I guess the designers had a lot of fun creating this but at the same time I'm really glad Buick decided to not put this into production now let's have a look at the generations here let's start with the muscle era of Buick. Up here with the Buick Skylark from 1965. This was called the Torque King for the reason that it had 510 pound-feet of torque. It had a big V8 with 360 horsepower. And looking at this design, I just think it's such a gorgeous, clean style. You know, the older I get, the more I um, appreciate muscle car era. I think they just become more and more beautiful with these simple lines and proportions that we have right here. It's something that's lacking in today's cars in my opinion and going back to the simplicity of designs I really appreciate that and it feels like they kind of got it right back in the 60s so this is an absolutely gorgeous machine specifically with the white top and in this 70s surf color. Next up we have the 1970 GSX. It had 350 horsepower. You can definitely see that this is now in a new era. When you think about muscle car shapes, this has the Chevelle kind of a greenhouse, a longer hood than the Skylark and it just feels beefier over the rear but still a very simple design. I do love these graphics that we have back in the 70s and how this graphic specifically now goes in to the wing itself. It's a cool connection between the graphic parts and the actual physical parts of the design. It feels like they had so much more fun designing cars back in the day. Moving on, we have the 1971 Buick Riviera. One of my favorite designs from the 70s. This looks like it has been lowered a little bit here, but in stock form, this actually set very low already. V8 with 330 horsepower. Now, my favorite detail of this car is this boat tail. It reminded me of a uh, split window cor Corvette almost. These lines going in from the roof through the uh, rear window and kind of converging into this point creating this center line in the middle of the boat tail with these angled inwards towards this piece. I think it's a beautiful looking design. We also have this big muscle over the rear fender and the lines overall sitting lower than what they did earlier in the 70s for example in the GSX up there. Now moving on this is one of my favorite uh, cars from the 80s and that is the Buick Grand National GNX. Now what if I were to tell you that you could actually win this specific 
car. And that brings me to today's sponsor, Omaze. I'm excited to be working with Omaze to offer you the chance to win a 1987 Buick Grand National GNX and at the same time support a great cause, the ACLU. The ACLU evolved from an organization of lawyers and advocates into a larger coalition of people fighting to defend the rights that the Constitution guarantees to all of us, whether it be in the courts, state houses, or even in Congress. Now let's talk about the price here, because the 1987 Buick Grand National GNX is a beast. It's powered by a 3.8 liter V6 engine, putting out 276 horsepower, driving the rear wheels. So you got a four-speed automatic launching this beauty to 60 miles per hour in just 4.7 seconds and onto a top speed of 124 miles per hour. And this is one of my personal favorite cars of the 80s and I even made a redesign of it a while back because I would love to see it come back. And this specific Grand National only has 2,000 miles on it, is number 51 out of only 547 units built and it's valued at $185,000. So make sure you head over to amaze.com slash Bambly for your chance to win this beauty. Donations support the great work of the ACLU. You do not want to miss this opportunity. Thanks to Amaze for sponsoring this video. The Grand National GNX was in production from 1984 to 1987. What I love about it, it, it just looks so menacing and I love that they only produce this car in one color and that is black. It's such a badass design with these beefed up fenders that you have in the front end this very boxy design all over the, the car, this bulge in the hood, and looking at the rear, this stance with these wheels, it just looks absolutely fantastic. And it looks so much better than a lot of modern cars. We have very simple graphics, as I said before, that lately has become way too complex, at least for my taste. I think the 70s and the 80s, they were just the, the golden era of simplistic design. And it really also shows that if you want to have a timeless design, simple design, simple lines and graphics is the way to go because I think Grand National GNX looks very cool by today's standard and then something happened in the 2000s with the Buick Century going from the uh, Grand National super badass car going into the 2001 century everything that Buick had built up over the decades to me is just lost with this type of design this just became a mass-produced super boring car I think it had a v6 with about 175 horsepower or something like that the design is completely anonymous with a lot of melted cheese going on as you can see all over this place the grill is melted the headlights are melted not a single sharp line in this design either in the front or in the rear we have an ellipse as the tail lights melted cheese that was a height of that type of design language and this kind of encapsulates or embodies that design all over this car moving on to the 2005 buick rendezvous so this is an suv as you can see they started to figure out that people want suvs so in 2005 they made a an agreement with pontiac to uh, take the aztec platform and design something of their own for buick and this is what came out i think first of all this looks a whole lot better than the aztec we have some more definition here we have this sharp line so it's not really melted cheese anymore it was just in the early 2000s that was a problem and then we have more design features and graphics features in the front end and in the rear to set this apart as a Buick. I think it's a pretty clean design actually. It's still too anonymous to me comparing it to the old 60s and 70s Pontiacs. Something is just getting lost here and it feels like that. Can you imagine being a designer in the 60s and 70s of Pontiac and then jumping forward up to 2000s and starting to design these kind of boring designs that doesn't have any feel or soul to them. Something was just lost in this era of design and it becomes more clear when we go into the 2011 Buick Regal right here. This is actually not a Buick from the start. This is an Opel or a Vauxhall in the UK, Opel in Europe, uh, Insignia. And they just took the Insignia, the exact same car, and what they did is just slapped Buick labels on it and, and uh, badges, as you can see right here, and they called it a Buick Regal, which is very sad. This means that this is not designed by Buick designers. Instead, they took something that 
already exists and slap their own badges on it and call it a Buick. I understand why companies need to do this at some points, but they need to do it to survive because they don't have the funds to develop a brand new car. But still, it's a little bit sad, as I said, when you think about the history of the brand. Same thing happened in 2018 with the 2018 Regal. Still, it's the exact same shape as an Opel Insignia or a Vauxhall Insignia. It's still a pretty good looking design, but it has nothing Buick about it. Now, going into the future, what does uh, Buick have in store for the future? For example, this down here is a 2022 brand new Buick Enclave. And you can see that this is not an Opel anymore, which tells me that Buick is hopefully on the rise again. And maybe they have their own funds now to design their own vehicles. We have some nice line flow in the body, as you can see, going into the front headlights and this muscle over the rear wheel arches. It's a pretty decent looking SUV. At the same time, I don't think it has enough identity to be called a Buick. I wish Buick designers brought back some of the old um, 80s vibes for their design, specifically since they're saying now that moving forward by the end of this decade, Buick wants to be an all electric brand. So what cooler way to make a real impact in the EV world than to take, for example, a 1987 Grand National, take the design cues from this and turn this into a modern looking EV. How cool would that be? I think that would be the right way to go for, for Buick if they really wanna come back strong and create something really special in the EV world. If you want a chance to win this specific Buick Grand National GNX that I have here, only 2000 miles, go to the link in the description, omaze.com slash Bambly for your chance to win. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.